Hey everyone, Professor Green here. Um, I've created this little presentation for you because a while back I was asked from you know you you and your classmates you know we're learning all of these concepts and theories. How does that apply? You know how do you take theory to the practical? So that's what I'm trying to do. Meaning, how does you know Bronfenbrenner's work, Vygotsky's work, impact you in the classroom and how you teach and what you teach and that sort of thing? And um, to keep it very simplified, obviously you need to do the readings. So the readings are way more detailed than what I'm going to give you today. Consider this like the Cliff Notes version of um, these two theories, or the Bronfenbrenner's Systems Theory and Vygotsky's Sociocultural Theory of Learning. And I'm just going to try and you know present it to you in layman terms, if you will, so you can have an understanding of how that impacts you. Um, and as you read these theorists, one thing that you're going to do as a student here at National Lewis is develop your own um, teaching philosophy statement. And when you go to an interview, when that time comes, you're going to be asked that question, what's your philosophy of teaching? Well, oftentimes students will hitch onto, you know, a, a theorist because then their work is research based. They're backed by evidence. Um, that might be Bronfenbrenner, Vygotsky, and one thing that confused me when I was studying all these theorists for the first time was, huh, I kind of like pieces of different theories. You know, I like Bronfenbrenner's piece and of that, his theory, and then also Vygotsky's theory makes sense to me. So you're allowed, you don't have to adopt one wholeheartedly. You can adopt pieces of what work best to your teaching style, your personality, your um approach to you know whatever fits your style so that being said let's get into it um so we have bronfenbrenner's system and if you look at this uh, i thought this was the best kind of graphic that i found because it had some definite you know some definitive like definitions here so you could read through it and what's what and then you'll see that you the teacher in school are in the micro system all right and then let's just break it down Big theory, what it means to you, classroom application. How are you going to take this theory and what does that mean in the classroom? So really, if you, I think as I read these, I highlighted in yellow the ones, you know, some very the important points that you should really need to know and give you a starting point. So if you, um, to think about this theory, to think about Bronfenbrenner's work and how that applies to you. And if you're asked that question, you know how to answer it. So really, teachers and parents should keep good communication with each other and work together to benefit the child. Obviously, you know, that's just, that's a huge one, right? Work with the parents. They're your partners. They're your, you know, the parents are with the child the majority of the day, and you're there during the school day. So obviously, it makes great sense to, you know, partner with the parent and really have a night in front. Um, and then also, teachers must be understanding of the situations their students' families may be experiencing, such as you know social and economic factors, and that you know are impacted by the various systems. So you need to kind of think about that. A lot of students live in poverty, for example. So you want to keep that in mind as you're you know interacting with students, developing experiences, all experiences meaning lesson plans. Keep all of those things in in um, you know as a factor whenever you're planning. And then also, if parents and teachers have a good relationship, this should shape the child's development in a positive way. So think about that power that you have. That's huge power. You may totally disagree with the parent, have different ideologies, but if you can find a common ground, and it's a lot of negotiation sometimes if you have a parent, again, that you totally disagree with, but if you can find a common ground and develop a good relationship of respect and rapport, it's likely going to... Um, impact the child's development in a positive way. And then you want ch children have to be active and engaged both academically and socially. They must work as a team with peers and get involved in meaningful learning experiences. So that is how this, you know, th again, cliff notes of this theory. So if you're having trouble thinking about this or visually ho visualizing how this works in the classroom, that's it. Um, then I just kind of broke down each of Bronfenbrenner's systems, if you will, and like such as the microsystem, that's a child's immediate environment, that's you. And then I put who, there you are, the teacher. And then some key points to remember, which you can read through. 
and then the meso system and what's important to remember about this is you the teacher will impact your students in immeasurable ways they're listening to watching and listening and watching everything you do so use that power for good um and the exosystem which is indirect influence on the child let's say so these are your extended family neighbors your parents workplace um, let's say this could have an impact on the child by the parent may come home and have a short temper with the child as a result of something that happened in the workplace resulting in negative effect on development so you know the just you know that there's nothing you can do about that as the teacher but just so you know that these are possibilities of how all these things are connected and then the macro system the attitudes and ideologies of the culture what does this mean for you when you get to know each of your students you must consider their culture when developing lesson plans to help promote success think about you know do they have uh, what's their socioeconomic status? Po you know, are they living in poverty? Are they wealthy? What's their ethnicity? All of these things need to be considered when you're developing lessons to try and help your students forward. And um, how do you do that? Well, you know, my first year of teaching, I had a student at the time from Sierra Leone, Africa, which in the 90s was, if you ever seen the Leonardo DiCaprio, DiCaprio movie, Blood Diamond? He was living there at that time. There was a lot of death and destruction and war between the rebels and the government who were going after diamonds. Um, and he experienced that. So I Googled Sierra Leone, found out as much as I could because at the time I didn't know a whole lot. And, um, you know, <clears throat> again, you, you want to avoid making sweeping generalizations, but that knowledge plus talking to my student, listening to him, um, tell me about whatever you wanted to share, which I, you know, push uh, someone to tell you a traumatic experience, but whatever you wanted to share was helpful for me to develop lessons that really spoke to him and got him engaged. And then um, the chrono system, we've all got, this impacts us all, like environmental changes over a lifetime, things such as moving to a new school, starting a new school, divorced parents or guardians, moving to a new house, um, major life transitions, historical events, think COVID-19, think 9-11, those major um, changes or historical events that, that impacted your life in some way. And then I, just to consider, ask yourself, what major life transitions have you experienced? What historical events impacted your life so far? Any normal transitions that impacted you? So for the big ones, like the, the historical events, think COVID-19, I think of my son who's in third grade who, you know, it worries me that, that this is such a huge thing. He's in third grade and wearing masks and living at home for a year and a half. That's a huge impact that he's going to take with him for the rest of his life. And, you know, who knows where it's going to go from here in terms of this terrible um, virus. But it's just, you know, you want to think about those things and what your students may have gone through. Think about what you've gone through and how that's impacted you and what might have benefited you as a student if you had a, you know whenever you're in the classroom um and then there were in 1994 there were some adjustments to Bron from brenner's original work which you can read uh but his work is widely accepted by the academic community one way it can impact you a teacher is if you have a student from another country than the u.s if you spend time and effort learning about the student's culture you will be a more effective teacher Google is your friend. Use it. Just make sure, you know, it's a reputable site. All right, now let's move on to Vygotsky. This is a cool one, right? So you see the um, the diagram there, and it's uh, in the middle, I can do this myself. And then you see the zone of proximal development, which sounds very like a robot. But really, so it's ZPD, right? Zone of proximal development. Um, it's where students are starting to, you know, just kind of learn. Think of in the example that we read this week about the little girl who's trying to learn how to ride a bike and um, her grandfather helped her. Well, the little girl was in the zone of proximal development, learning how to ride the bike. And then the grandfather um, provided the scaffolding or support, helping her, holding her, and then letting her go gradually. And then ultimately, the girl could do it by herself. So I think that's a real easy way um, to kind of think about it. Like zone, you can zone approximate development. I can do these with some help, right? And then eventually you get it to, I can do this by myself. <clears throat> and then some of the vocabulary, 
like more knowledgeable other, ZPD, scaffolding, cognitive development, social constructivism um, are some of the key terms associated with Vygotsky's work. And how does this impact you? Constructivism is an approach that is truly student-centered, where you allow students to explore, work together, collaborate, um, and they practice key skills like summarizing, questioning, clarifying, and predicting. And the teacher is really, the teacher's role is reduced over time. So you start to give ownership to the students to be in charge of their own learning. It's not easy, but when it happens, I think it's magical. It's a, constructivism is, a, is the theory that I log into most and consider myself a constructivist teacher. Um, and then more on some scaffolding. A teacher or more advanced peer helps students structure or arrange a task so that a novice can work on it successfully. So if you have somebody who might be in your class who's struggling with the concept versus a student who's acing that concept, doing great, you might just pair them up to work together. Or you create, as the teacher, experiences to help scaffold or help push, help push forward the student who's struggling so they can be successful. And that's about it. There are some critics of Vygotsky, and you will also learn about Jean Piaget sometime soon, um, who they kind of had an academic debate, if you will, back and forth. But one of the criticisms of Vygotsky's work was that he assumed that his work is relevant to all cultures. And some people dismissed that, that that's not true. But, um, it, you know, and said it might not be, this theory might not be useful for all, in all, all cultures for all types of learning. Um, you know, it's really up to you to make up your mind, but I just wanted to, again, give you kind of some of the basics to help you think this through. So thank you. Now if I can stop recording.